will mm -hmm. to his people. And meditating on the word is just one of the ways that we develop our relationship with God mm -hmm. and allow the word to work in our lives. Amen. Amen. Now we're getting into prayer. Mm -hmm. Pray. That is number two, our way to conquer unbelief. Prayer is our communication with God. And we all know that there is not a single relationship that will work without communication. I know I would not want to live in a house with somebody that never spoke to me. Mm. I mean, I would think, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. not, not anything? <laughs> to me? We, uh, we know that Pastor Dad gave the example of how he and Pastor Mom <laughs> had to come to an understanding early in their marriage like um so neither one of us reads minds and if you want your expectations to be met you have to let me know what they are mm -hmm. okay so fortunately for us god is always speaking we just talked about how the word is constantly revealing new and different things to us mm -hmm. god's just waiting for us to do our part he's waiting to hear from us and that's where prayer comes in God, you know, we do get the opportunity sometimes. He wakes us up at 3 in the morning, wants to talk, wants you to get in the Word. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen often. We, a lot of times, are the ones that have to take the initiative. Oh, man. And there's um <clears throat> a joke about a guy going off to college, and he started off writing these uh, long letters to his dad, telling him what he was doing, how his classes were going and all that. And his dad would write him back. And as time kept going on, his letters would get shorter and shorter. And so his father would respond in kind until finally the son got to the point where he just texted his dad, no mun, no fun, your son. <laughs> and so the dad said, bad, uh, stayed back, too bad, so, so bad, sad, your, your dad. dad. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to get to that place in our relationship with God where we're just kind of taking a couple of quick seconds to give them a few bullet points of, hey, God, make sure I'm healthy today, I'm safe to get to where I want to be, mm -hmm. and you're good, I love you, bye. We don't want to get to that point. We want to not only have genuine communication with God, but communication is a two-way street. We want to pause as well to hear what he has to say to us. Amen. Amen. It is great to pray, you know, while we're working or we can when we can squeeze in a quick minute or while we're at church. But it's a whole different level to set aside some specific prayer time with no distractions. Now, there are tons of times in life where multi multitasking comes in handy and it's a great thing and you need to do it. But when we set aside time for prayer and reading our word, that's one of the main times where having a singular focus is best who saw that movie uh war room mm -hmm. anybody notice she took her phone in there or had a tv set up in there oh mm -hmm. yeah. when she went in the war room singular focus mm -hmm. now there might have been notes all over the place but when you know you look back she looked back at those things that are written on there yeah like, they were probably prayers yes they mm -hmm. were prayers because prayer was her focus yes and the word the scriptures come on mm -hmm. that's what we need in there mm -hmm. two important things we have to remember when we communicate with god one he speaks through his word mm -hmm. don't discount reading the word that can be part of your prayer time and communicating with god because he speaks through his word mm -hmm. it's not just a church chore like okay i read one verse today i'm good it's not irrelevant oh, it's an old time book and blah blah those people are all dead and what's that have to do with if you got that view you got a whole lot of other issues to work out okay <laughs> but <laughs> we have to know god's word is alive and god can use it to speak directly mm -hmm. to your to spirit and your specific yep. situation it doesn't have to be like, okay, uh, the Lord led me to judge this. Now, how can I apply this to my life? Mm -hmm. Pray first, like, God, let me read what you want me to read. Give me your spirit to reveal what you want me to get out of it. And mm -hmm. God will do it, okay? Amen. Mm -hmm. Number two, this is what uh, two things we have to remember in our communication with God. Number one was he speaks through his word. Number two is we have to be willing to hear what God is actually saying. Mm, that's good. One of the main reasons we don't know what God wants or we can't hear him, we feel like God's been silent, is because he's not saying what we want to hear. Mm. You know how mm -hmm. you can uh, say something to somebody that they don't like or something that they don't want to hear and they go, huh, what? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I've done it. I'm like, he's like, can you um wash these dishes, huh? What? <laughs> I hate washing them. I didn't, what? No, I'm about to go upstairs. No. <laughs> That's how we act. Like God says, I want you to go pay for these people's food, huh? That you little, oh, the devil? Is that the devil speaking? You know, right, the devil he laughed. Devil, tell you go do that. <laughs> we have to be willing to hear what God is actually saying. And even though we know sometimes good and well, we hear him. God gives us a, an, an instruction. We want to go talk to eight friends, three mm-hmm. deacons, the pastor, and talk about, I'm just not sure about what God is saying. I don't know what he wants me to do. But the fact is, you heard what he said. Mm-hmm. You heard him, but it wasn't what you wanted to hear. So instead, you went shopping for people to right. go find on what you mm-hmm. had in mind Point instead them. of obeying God. Ooh, girl. Tell don't it. let that be you. Don't let it be you. I'm, I think God wants me to stay. Um, I just, I'm just not sure if I should go or leave. God said go. Don't you want to stay? That's mm-hmm. you. Okay. Be willing to hear what God is saying. It's not always going to be great. We already just said a lot of this obedience is an act of our will. We're not mm-hmm. going to feel it all the time, but we can't discount that God is speaking just because He's saying something we don't want to hear. Amen. Amen. So when we commune with God through the Word and prayer. We become uh, more and more familiar with his voice mm-hmm. and what he would say. So we know when we hear his voice. All right. Because imagine <clears throat> your mom coming up behind you. You had no idea she was anywhere near you. Would you have to, see that mom? Yeah. <laughs> you know, good girl, you know her voice because you have relationship. If your mom hasn't called you in years and years and years, but you pick up the phone and hear her voice, right? Mother, is that you? You know your mom's <laughs> voice. And that's how we want to be so familiar with God. And John 10 and 27 says, My sheep listen to my voice. Mm-hmm. I know them and they follow me. You see, we have to know his voice and follow him. That's the kind of sheep we want to be. We don't want to be, God, is that you? Are you over here? Are you over there? That's crazy nonsense okay (laughs) (laughs) and finally the third way that we conquer unbelief is fasting Mm -hmm. we meditate we pray we fast and y'all already know how oic rolls we've already done a good bit of in-depth teaching on fasting because of our um annual fast that we start at the beginning of each year and pastor john does not play about a good corporate fast Mm -hmm. we all call to this fast (laughs) but let's go over a couple of reminders of the main points of fasting number one you can only fast from food Mm -hmm. that's just food is a fast you can take a break from social media you can put a pause on your phone time. Mm-hmm. You can do a whole lot of other things, but that's not fasting. Fasting is specifically from food because you are denying your flesh something it needs for survival. Mm-hmm. And you're doing it for God. Now, we all know the intermittent fasting is now a diet fad. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's different. Mm-hmm. The purpose of that is totally different. But fasting as it pertains to drawing closer to God... You're telling your flesh, you don't win. You're not in control. I will deny you the very thing you need so that I can get spiritually fed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. (laughs) Fasting is a way we let God know just how much he means to us. We're saying, God, I will put my flesh under subjection to your spirit because I want you more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Even more than my daily food and sustenance. So one was fasting is you can only fast from food number two fasting is not just a diet i said that Mm -hmm. one of the reasons it's good to couple fasting with those other things where we're cutting out the distractions like our phone or social media movies or whatever it may be because we know there's so much coming at us like just all the time we have input there's stuff to do there's music playing there's calls to make errands to run People to see, phone in our hand, TV playing. I mean, there's always something. But when we're taking the time to deny our flesh, a lot of the time, that's what it is. It's something that satisfies our flesh. We're playing games on our phone or watching YouTube or TikTok, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Cut those things out in conjunction with fasting from food. 
that's when we're able to more clearly hear from God. We want to disconnect from all those other things that can take our attention attention coldly away from God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you think about it, if we literally think about the Word of God as our daily food, and we're only getting it on Sunday morning or the occasional Wednesday, our spirit man is starving. Mm, that's good. I mean, even if you're committed to every Sunday, every Wednesday, that, and but you're not putting in any personal time to meditate on God's word, you still will have your spirit out there hungry, starving. Mm -hmm. And I really can't imagine only having a real meal on Sundays and Wednesdays and then maybe a light snack in the mornings when I listen to my Bible plan while I'm doing 900 other things that I'm distracted by. You know, mm. that's not enough to sustain us. <clears throat> we have to take the time to pause and think, man, I'm not sure I'm hearing from God like I should. I don't even know if I have the right perspective of how big God is versus mm -hmm. my problems. I talked about that recently too. If you're flying into New York, you see the Statue of Liberty from above. It looks tiny, but when you go stand next to it, it is gigantic. Mm -hmm. That's the view we want to have of God. When we're distant from God, because we know he's never changing, he's never moving. He looks far away, and our problems look like a giant mountain. But when we get so close to God, man, he's way up here, and our problem looks like the little teeny thing. But mm -hmm. obviously, he's bigger than that. So mm -hmm. we need to be able to have the right perspective on God. And that's when we take the time to fast. We're like, man... We don't have to wait for the pastor to call the fast. Mm -hmm. We don't have to get eight or nine other people's, uh, you know, opinion on it. <clears throat> Talk to God about what type of fast you can take. You know, maybe you need to do the Jesus Total 40 or the Daniel Vegan 21. Call it whatever you want. Mm. Maybe a three-day juice fast, not a cleanse. <laughs> mm -mm. But pray about it and see what God is saying that you need to get yourself back on track. Amen. We want to hear from God. We want to hear from him properly. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? We want to get to know him better and deepen our relationship with him. That way we can be that sheep that knows his voice and follows him unquestioningly. Amen. In closing, the ways we conquer unbelief were meditate, meditating, pray. praying, and, and fasting. Fast. Mm -hmm. And Pastor John gave me this little thing we can say, read, remember, rehearse. That's what we have to do with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Read, remember, rehearse. Over and over. Say it to yourself. Over and over. The Word of God is the key. It's not going to work in our lives if we don't put in the work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they. I think I've heard so many teachers mention it when I was in school. Like, you're not going to get this by osmosis. Osmosis, uh-huh. And it got on my nerves. But <laughs> the same thing, the Word of God is just going to seep into our hearts. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, yes, I feel, ooh, I listened to my Bible while I was sleeping last night. Now I feel like I know Psalms. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And so, so much of, the, of our walk with Christ requires a willingness to act in obedience. That mm -hmm. it takes an act of our will. And that means we won't always feel like it. We won't always think it's a great idea. You know, God, he said, my ways are higher than your ways. My mm -hmm. thoughts, not even on the same level. And we have a, an excellent example in Jesus himself. He knew what his purpose was to go to the cross for us. Yet he struggled in agony with mm -hmm. what he had to do. How can we think it's going to be less for us? It's right. not going to be easy. If we're going to walk out God's purpose for us, we have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. We have to do the hard things sometimes, and we can't do it without struggle. Amen? Amen. That's how God operates. He uses those difficult things to build our faith mm -hmm. and to help us to be stronger. We want to take the time and put in the work to eliminate unbelief in our lives so we can let word work. Amen. Yay, man. Mm -hmm. Any comments, questions, concerns? All hearts and minds clear? Yes, ma'am. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time tonight and your words spoken to us about letting the word work in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity you give us to spend time with you, to spend time in your word. We pray that you would give us the unquenchable thirst and hunger for more of you, for more of your word. As you lead us to spend more time with you, we will be willing and obedient, whether it's a fast, no matter what it is, God, we pray that we will do what it takes to allow the word to work in our lives. 
In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Let's do our benediction, number six, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make, make his, his face shine upon, upon thee and be gracious unto thee. thee. The, the Lord, Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace and sin no more. Have a great week. See you at Easter. Sorry for the technical difficulties.